Welcome back everybody, good to see you. I hope yesterday you had good fun looking at all of those different adverts and thinking about those persuasive features that you could see in them. And I hope as well that maybe those discussions even carried on into the evening if you were then watching TV, uh, maybe on YouTube, and you were seeing some adverts and thinking about the ways that they were persuasive. So we're going to be continuing to think about that again today. And we're going to keep thinking about these A forest features that we've been looking at. Um, but today we're going to shift our focus really from looking at existing ones and trying to identify these features and to analyse them in adverts. And we're going to start now to actually use some of these ourselves. We haven't really done much writing of our own over the last few days in terms of uh, our own ideas. So just a little recap then, some of these features, I'm sure these are sort of ingrained on your brain by now. I hope you're with me. So while I'm uh, pulling down this uh, picture of a forest, Perhaps you can uh, say out loud what the next one is going to be. So A is for alliteration, F is for facts, O is for opinions, R is for rhetorical questions, E is for emotive language, S is for statistics, and T is for the rule of three. And these are the seven features and techniques which we're gonna really be focusing and honing in on. So alliteration, then just a quick recap, I'll give the example for each one this time, so I'm sure you're familiar with the, the kind of definition by now. An example of alliteration in this brilliant, beautiful and bonkers new book is a must read. We've got all of those B sounds at the start of the words there. Uh, for a fact, it might be, this is the best selling book in the UK. An opinion might be, Julia from Chichester says, I love it. This is my favourite book and I'd recommend it to anyone. I should just say that although we can have a quote from someone or like a review from someone like Julia from Chichester here, it would be just as OK in advertising to have the kind of the view or the opinion of whoever the author is. It doesn't need to say so and so says it could just be this is an amazing book. It could just be something like that. Uh, for rhetorical questions, are you looking for a new adventure? Do you want to miss out on the best book of the year? Emotive language, that's when we're really trying to tug at the heartstrings, we're kind of trying to uh, play on our readers' emotions and make them feel something. Uh, this tragic book is about the brutal murder of a boy's family. Statistics, over one million people have already bought their copy of the book. And the rule of three, this book is original, unique, and funny. So I think we've spent plenty of time looking at these features. Hopefully you're really uh, growing to be an expert in these persuasive features now. What we're going to do today is we're going to try to write some of our own with a particular focus on the Great Exhibition. So on Monday we learn all about the Great Exhibition in history. If you've no idea what I'm talking about I'd really recommend going to watch Monday's history video first of all. Um, and we're going to try to imagine now that we are the advertisers for the Great Exhibition and it's our job to try to persuade the people of Victorian Britain to buy a ticket and to come. Now what we're doing today is we're going to try to do this at a kind of sentence level so we're going to try to get some really good sentences down and then we're going to keep hold of that so if you're doing it on a sort of you know uh, just a spare bit of paper keep hold of that over the next couple of days because this will be uh, something useful we can then channel into our, our main piece of work, our hot task on this, which is going to be our persuasive leaflet all about the Great Exhibition. So what I'd like you to do today, we're going to have seven subheadings. If you're feeling a bit lazy, you can just have A-F-O-R-E-S-T. Don't need to write the whole thing, but you do need to know what it stands for. And I'd like you to write two sentences at least under each one. And it's got to be about the Great Exhibition. So I'd like two sentences which feature alliteration, which are about the Great Exhibition. I'd like two sentences with facts about the Great Exhibition, two sentences with opinions, and so on and so on. And each one is going to be all about the Great Exhibition of Victorian Britain. So we've got to imagine that we are the advertisers and we're just coming up with some ideas because these sentences we're then going to sort of place in a sensible position in our main work when we come to do that later on. So let's come, let's have a few examples together. So alliteration, I want to think of some words uh, that start with the same sound or the same letter. So let's have a think. I'm going to have the great exhibition is 
elegant, exceptional, and we need another E, don't I? Elegant, exceptional, and hmm, not quite on this page, so I'm cheating a little bit here. Exciting. Sorry, my mind went a bit blank there. Apologies. In a long day. Sorry, everyone. Uh, the great, the great exhibition is elegant, exceptional, and exciting. I, think I might actually prefer that in a slightly different order. I'm going to have elegant, exciting, and exceptional. That'd be a good one, won't it? Yeah. There we go. So uh, I've used a really nice example of alliteration. There. I've got a couple of E's: elegant, exciting, and exceptional. You notice know, so I've also really there got the rule of three, haven't I? I've got three things all together so i'm sort of combining some there facts okay then. so i'm thinking now about uh some facts to do with the great exhibition so i don't want now words like exciting which really are more about opinions aren't they i want things that are provable things that are definitely obviously true i'm going to say the great exhibition is I just say as well, now I've got exhibition on the page a couple of times here. Treat this as a bit of a spelling word because this is quite a hard word to write, but we're going to need to get used to this, aren't we? Because we're going to be writing exhibition quite a lot over the next couple of weeks. So if you haven't already done so, really try to hone in on that spelling and make sure you're copying that down carefully. The great exhibition is made almost entirely of glass. Now that would be quite an interesting fact to Victorians because their houses would not have been made almost entirely of glass. Opinions, okay. So I want a sentence now which um, is one person's view or one person's opinion. This is not something I can prove, but this is us maybe using some exciting adjectives to sort of make it sound really fantastic, even though that's just our, our opinion on it. The most incredible um, attraction in London. Now, you can't prove that. You can't measure how incredible something is. There's no kind of uh, list of the most incredible attractions in London, but that's an opinion. It might be that the Great Exhibition is amazing. It might be that it's incredible. Anything like that is an opinion rather than a fact. So a rhetorical question, and this is where I want to address my reader directly. I want to engage with them and I want them to sort of really start thinking about the, this and sort of stopping and thinking about their answer in their head. Do you want to miss out on the event of the summer? Now, the reason this is a rhetorical question is because probably most people would think, no, I don't want to miss out on the event of the summer. The answer is kind of implied, and that means it's obvious. It's not actually asking you because it wants you to know, or sorry, it wants to know your answer. It's asking because hopefully the, the answer is kind of obvious and you will obviously think, no, I don't want to miss out on the event of the summer. And the implication then is that you should read on and find out more so that you don't. Okay, emotive language can be quite a tricky one here. I was thinking about how, which emotion we can tap into. And I think actually the one I want to try to tap into here is patriotism. And what that means is feeling proud of your country because the Great Exhibition was kind of all about patriotism. They wanted to show off how brilliant Britain was. They wanted people to feel proud of their own country. They wanted to show the rest of the world how fantastic and amazing Britain's inventors were. So I'm going to try to sort of tap into that a little bit here. And I'm going to try to play on that sort of feeling of patriotism. So I'm going to say, take pride in your country and see uh, Britain's worldwide success. This exhibition really was all about that. It was showing off uh, Britain's successes on the worldwide stage. It was showing off that Britain was at the forefront of manufacturing, invention, and so on. And hopefully people would think, yeah, I am proud of my country. I am proud to be British. I am proud of all these things that our country has done. Uh, I slightly run out of room there, but you, so the remaining ones would have been statistics. So it might be something like 99% uh, of visitors so far have loved it. It might be, uh, you know, nine out of 10 visitors would recommend the Great Exhibition to their friends, something like that. You can make up your statistics here. Don't worry too much if it's not, uh, if, you know, if you've not been to a focus group and been asking, I think that's okay. 
And for our rule of three, it could be something similar to this. You might have three adjectives, or you might say, maybe you could list three exhibitions it has. So you might say, right, you can come and see trains, automobiles and bicycles, something like that. Okay, so try to get me two sentences for each one. I've just, just done one here for speed, but try to get two sentences for each one. And crucially, keep hold of your piece of paper because we're gonna to try to use some of these sentences uh, when we come to our main piece of writing over the next few days, because that way you'll know you've used all of these different features. Okay, thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's session. I hope you enjoy getting on with that. And I'll see you back here for maths a little bit later on.